three, two, one. Welcome to Bellwether. Thank you for joining me this week. It's been a summer off. I've taken two months off from the podcast. Things were busy. I had a lovely summer and now I'm getting my podcast legs back. It's back. It's fall. We're bouncing back for a good, positive end of the year, a great final quarter. And thank you for joining me today. Episode 84. What I want to talk about today was something I was just asked to speak on at, at an event and it's bounce back ability. And I love the term and I love the idea. And there's this group run by a, a gentleman by the name of Raymond Sexton. And Raymond is based in Australia. Irish guy based in Australia has this amazing community of people online. It's called Tangible. He's got these tangible events. And every summer he calls it Tangible Summer School where he brings these amazing people from around the world together to talk on different topics. And San Francisco, Australia, Ireland, you name it, people are going to be there. And it's an amazing community. I really like being a part of it. And he asked me to speak a few weeks ago on the idea of bounce back ability. And I loved it. I loved it. And so what I interpreted that to mean was how to prepare yourself for the new economy. How are you getting back to whatever it is, right? We've, we've had a crazy uh, year and a half. We, some, many people are traveling back into the city to, to do things or traveling back into an office or, or doing whatever it is. And people are looking for some semblance of normal. And in the United States, anyway, we have the Labor Day holiday, which is generally when most people come back from their summer vacations, whatever they could take. And, you know, things kind of kick back into normal and, and we do all that stuff. So um, bouncing back this year, I think, has particular meaning. It's been a year and a half for the pandemic. There's still a lot of uncertainty in the world. And so how do you bounce back? How do you shout, I'm back, baby? when the rest of the world may not be. And it's it's an interesting kind of dynamic to think of. And so we could, we could talk about today how to get yourself ready to bounce back. And we could use the term resiliency. I don't like it. I think it's completely overbaked. It's done. Um, it's been bastardized. The word resiliency in, in the office, it's like when you take something nice and you just destroy it. Um, but for lack of a better term, we could say that resiliency is is part of this. But I want to. It's more than just being resilient. It's more than just you know facing difficult circumstances and and staying strong to what you want to do. It's about bouncing back, right? And bouncing back is a process. Bouncing back is a real process. I have a few clients who just love process and they love to understand how things work. And I would say bouncing back and your ability to bounce back, bounce back ability, which should be in the dictionary. <laughs> is a process. And, and so there are phases to bouncing back, which many people don't think of, you know, things as bouncing back. You say, oh, I got, you know, school starting again. And how are the kids doing? And we've got, you know, work is getting busy. And, you know, September is such a busy month. It's also beautiful outside. And we want to do all these different things. And there's so much opportunity. And, you know, how do you bounce back from the fact that maybe you haven't been doing what you normally would do for the last year and a half, really. I mean, there are many people who still are not back in the office, which is great, which is great. But some people are being forced to do it now. And, you know, how do you how do you do this? So three phases I want to talk about in in this idea of bouncing back. And the, the three phases are acceptance, responsibility, and learning. And that's one, two, three. When you think about bouncing back, and I want you to put yourself through this process as you think about where you fit in this week that you're bouncing back from whatever it is that you, I mean, you could be coming back from summer vacation. You could be uh, switching jobs and careers. Technically, you're bouncing back into a, to a new initiative. You could be coming back from a leave of absence. You could be coming back from whatever. And, and I'm talking about this in the context of work. But bouncing back could be anything. It could be any kind of, you know, you know I say before, work and life are the same now right? Personal capability plus your work product, that is your life now. And if one of those things doesn't work, we, we got to figure that out. But so three phases in bouncing back. And, and the first one is acceptance. And if you read the book, this, this follows, and the book, by the way, if you're new to me, is Adapting Emotion, Finding Your Place in the New Economy. You can get it wherever books are sold. 
anywhere books are sold. Just about. If they don't have it in the store, then they can order it for you. Um, <laughs> and order lots. Order lots of books. The The idea of acceptance um, is not just a recognition that things are going to go crazy. It's not just a recognition that um, you can't control everything. It's not just, you know, there, there are all these these ideas on accepting the fact that the world is not going to operate in the way that you want it to operate. And that's just normal. That's just, you know, that's, we'd, we'd love things to work, but that's when we talk about the resiliency, you know, the word I hate, when we talk about bouncing back, when we talk about getting things done, the world will go in its own way and it's not going to align with what you need 99% of the time. Okay, that's just life. And and what I talk a lot about, especially with clients, is the difference between problems and circumstance. And when we talk about acceptance, uh, and there are certain things we should accept, certain things we shouldn't, of course, but from an acceptance standpoint, there are problems and circumstances and figuring out the difference between a problem which you can solve and a circumstance which you must respond to are two very different things. And recognizing and accepting the fact that the world, 99% of the things, and I'm making up statistics, but it's pretty high, 99.9 maybe, the majority of things in this world that happen are circumstances that you cannot solve, that you have to respond to. Okay, the pandemic is not something that you can ex- uh, that you can that you can fix. It's not a problem. It's a circumstance that you have to respond to. I mean, there are problem aspects, problematic aspects to it as well, right? But when we're getting ready to bounce back, let's say, hey, uh, Jim, you have to be back in the office now three days a week. Uh, that is a circumstance that you have to respond that you have to to respond to. So when we talk about acceptance, there are certain things we have to accept, certain things we don't. But recognizing the difference of things that you can solve and and circumstances to respond to is a nice little framework I like to put around people so that they can think about what goes on beyond. You know, you can actually focus on the things that are important rather than trying to solve a, a circumstance that you have no business solving and you're not going to be able to solve it and you're wasting a lot of your time. So let's let's alleviate a bunch of that time. Let's focus on, on that easy acceptance part for those important things. And then we can go on to phase two, which is responsibility. And that's where I like the, the problems versus circumstance kind of balance is is responsibility for what you can control. And it's what you need. And it is your responsibility as an individual to take over and control what it is that you need to control. Okay, what you need, whether it's a, a focus on wellness, whether it's a focus on decisions, whether it's a focus on uh, I don't know, whatever it is, it's your responsibility to, to make the decisions and the choices you need to make to get you to where you need to be, to get you to bounce back. Nobody is going to do that for you. Nobody is going to make the decisions for you because they can't. It's disingenuous. Nobody can make the best choices for you because only you have all of, all of the experiences that make you you. You're a unique snowflake, damn it. Nobody can figure out all of those things for you. That was a little kind of raw, raw, cheesy. But at the end of the day, you lie in the bed that you make. Okay? And and look, some people have, have really shittier beds than others, and I get that. But at the end of the day, you're the person who's got to fix it. Okay? And, and you're the person who has to say, this is where I want to sleep tonight, and this is how it's going to be. Only you can dictate... Yeah, I want to, you know, I, I want a promotion. Okay. What are you doing to get the steps for the promotion? How is that conversation going? How are you articulating that desire for that promotion or that vision of where you, it is that you want to be? And it's your responsibility to take the steps to do it. To wait for someone to recognize your greatness, you're going to be waiting a long time. And the reason you're going to be waiting a long time for other people to solve your problems is because other people are solving their own problems. And so, when we recognize that there are problems and circumstances, acceptance for, for the fact that the world is crazy, and then understanding that you have a responsibility to say, you know what? I can't control the world. I can control my choices. I can control my wellness, my well-being, my thinking, my choices, my decisions. That's an empowering vision to say, you know what? Let me focus on me. It's this whole macro change, macro world. You got to focus on micro you. Okay, so that's responsibility, number two. So you go from acceptance to responsibility. And then once you make the steps, take the steps to make responsible choices for yourself, we move on to part three.
And part three of bounce back ability is learning. It's a learning mindset. Uh, I love the, the term. Some people say bafflement. And it's, it's how we choose to evolve and continue to do well is getting excited about learning something new. And when you think about, if you pause right now, what do I have to learn right now to bounce back appropriately? It could be a lot of different things, right? It's cathartic. It's scary. We're doing different things. There are no rules. We know that there are no rules. Do you need to relearn small talk? Start practicing some communication stuff. Like, uh, what questions can you ask? You know, what vaccine did you get? Did you do this? Did you do that? Whatever. Uh, we have to relearn how to commute. Right, we have to relearn how to 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 speak up for ourselves in a in a public setting. Right, we've been living behind our screens for so long. Um, maybe we need to learn new skill sets because the workplace has changed so much that you're now irrelevant, and you need to find a different way to communicate your value to an organization. There are all kinds of different different uh, things that we need to relearn. But the idea of acceptance responsibility, saying, I need to make good choices. You have to learn the context in order to make good decisions and good choices. And the way to do that is to be open to new ideas around you and having conversations with the people around you. I have a theory, and there's no basis for it, but it's my theory. The reason kids are so happy is because they're always learning something new. And the reason adults are so miserable is because they're required to have all of the answers. They no longer learn. And nobody's given me a good reason as to why that's not true, so I'm going to go with it. <laughs> but the reason we like to learn, and when you hear people talk about you know, their rebirth and their, 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 you know, I am reborn and I've found all these things, what they're talking about is they've found a learning mindset. right? Whether they're doing it through meditation, whether they're doing it through um, a new hobby, whether they're doing it through whatever, they're learning something new. And that's energizing. That's what gets us jazzed. And so when you sit and think about acceptance, responsibility, and learning is what are you learning to make yourself more responsible as an individual to find out what you need? Okay, it's not necessarily learning a difficult skill set. It's about learning something that makes you better and learning something that fits into your context, your world of what it is that you actually need in order to bounce back appropriately. So I've got plenty of my challenges coming up for, for the fall. I'm creating my reopening plan, my bounce backing plan. Um, and I would encourage you to do the same, right? And it's a, it's a lot to reflect on. And it, when, when we talk about catharsis and we talk about, oh, you know, take the stress off of me and everything else, it's accepting certain things that you can't change. It's taking responsibility for those things that you actually can and being able to filter down, cut out the noise. Don't pay attention to everything. Only find the things that, you know, what can you actually ignore and what can you focus on that's actually really important for you? And then starting to learn, you know, what do you actually need? And that is, so when I talk about learning, learning what you actually need, that's your work. That's your ongoing job is reflection and thinking, right? Having a conversation in your head. What do I actually need in this moment? And it's almost like meditation. People talk about meditation, but, you know, that takes many different forms. I know people who take ice baths and I know people who take hot sauna meditations and hot yoga and all kinds of random crap, whatever. Sometimes it's as simple as a question for yourself. What do I actually need in this moment? And so I would encourage you to think about that stuff. People are raring to go. I know they're raring to go. I know people are itching to travel. People are itching to get back around people. Social is one of the three core aspects that we need to focus on from from just a, a successful, mindful, wellness, healthy world, right? You've got your physical wellness, your mental wellness, and your social wellness. And social took a hit over the last 18 months. And people are looking to bounce back and get that back in, in into, into where it should be. So I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to bounce back and increase your bounce back ability. I encourage you to stop using the word resilience <laughs> because everybody does it. And as always, I'd love to hear what, what, what you're bouncing back with. And so happy reflecting, happy thinking, happy bouncing back. Send me a note. Find me on Twitter, Bellwether Hub. Um, I'm on all the platforms, just Bellwether Hub. Send me a note. Send me an email. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you have a wonderful week. And I hope you have a wonderful, excellent time bouncing back. Thank you. See you next time.